Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. This is Matt from Gun For Hire and I wanted to go through the process with you of what I personally had to do to get my New Jersey carry permit. So without further ado, here we go. Starting from the beginning, let me say I'm a New Jersey resident and I also have a FID card and a passport and my driver's license and all addresses match. All right, that aside, let's move forward. So what we're gonna do is look at this state police uh, checklist that they gave us. So driver's license and birth certificate or driver's license naturalization papers. I used a Xerox copy, don't send the original, of I use my uh, passport and my driver's license. All right, and then three state of New Jersey applications. So this is the application. We have that at the range. You can download it also on our website. So let's just talk about this for a second here. Up here, it says municipal code. We get a lot of questions. What is that? Is that the ORI number? Do a search for your town. You'll find the municipal code, all right? It's a little bit different than the ORI, some more digits. All right, you're gonna fill out the rest here. And guess what? All you have to do is fill out this section. Now let's talk about this section for a second. We get a lot of questions on number 26. Do you suffer from a physical defect or sickness? If you write no, the next question says, if answer to question 26 is yes, that means if you answered no, don't answer 27. You leave that blank, all right? So once you fill this out, you can get it notarized. That's right. You do not need to have your references come to the notary. You don't need to have this filled out. The notary is not notarizing this section, okay? So again, fill out this in triplicate, all right? The other thing is we're getting people saying, well, do I fill this out by hand? Can I fill it out by computer? You can do both, but talk with your PD, your local PD first, because why? One PD wanted it handwritten. Another PD wanted it filled out. Some PDs don't care. It's best to touch base with your local PD first. So once I filled out this thing personally, I did it three times. I did it on the computer um, in Morris County and I had my three references. They signed this in triplicate. So of course I had this page done three times and they signed it three times. I printed it from my computer three times. If you fill it out by hand, you cannot Xerox it. You have to fill it out three times, three originals, all right? Okay, notary will be notarizing in the bottom. So now that you have your application set, let's see what's next. Four color passport size photographs. This is a funny thing because a lot of people, when they go to uh, places like a CVS or Dwayne Reed, passport to them means two inches. But of course, uh, this is one and a half inches. So on the back of the application, it says one and a half here. So make sure you have them set the camera. You can't cut your head off and your neck off and just give them this square. You have to, uh, it has to uh, be the passport specific design layout of you in a one and a half, all right? So you can get four of those. We also do that at the range, actually. Uh, consent for mental health search. This is fun. So you do not have to find a doctor. You don't have to do any of that, all right? You're basically filling out this top section. Take two. Why? Because PDs are all doing it a little bit differently. Um, for myself, I walked up to the police station after I made an appointment and I asked them, do you want to witness me signing it or do you want it already done? My PD didn't care. So they, uh, they basically witnessed for me and that's it. We have other PDs that we know they want this done and they think they're doing you a favor. They, they don't want to, uh, have to do more steps when you come in. They want everything set and done. So you would actually have this witnessed already, all right? So again, PDs are doing a little bit differently. You could touch base with your local PD to save yourself some time. So that's the consent for mental health. So again, when I walked up to my PD, I had a pen ready and I said, do you guys want to witness or not? And they didn't care. So again, um, just helping them and yourself get through this process a little bit quicker. Written proof of ownership. So for me, I had a, uh, I had my permit and I had the receipt for the gun. So that was pretty simple. I had those things ready to go. And again, if you are 
you have a gun that was inherited or um, you brought it from a different state and you might not have that, you can write a letter with the serial number, your name, and then have that notarized and you can state in the letter that, that you do own that specific gun. Um, the next is the qualification. So that's a big, uh, that's a big thing that's been happening here is uh, we've been doing a lot of qualifications. I'd, I'd say we're well over the thousands of how many people that we processed here. Um, and, you know, it's a pass or fail. So, you know, again, this video is just about this process of, of what we're doing. And um, it's not specifically about all the different things with regarding that qualification. I will say that we've been doing the qualifications for 30 years now and it's 27, 28,000 people we've qualified. We're not changing uh, the qualification. It's something that the courts have been accepting uh, is the gun for hire qualification. And we definitely let our customers know that, you know, this is what's required. We're not adding anything additional, which is kind of hypocritical because that's what the government does to us. So we tell you what's required. And then at the same time, we tell you what's critical, you know, holster draw, basics of pistol, one-on-one -on -one training. All of these things are critical if you are going to carry a gun, please. Everybody around you, everybody in your family, everybody wants you to have the proper training. So please don't stop at what's required. All right. So we did the, I did my qualification um, and I left with my score sheet and that signed. So... I had the uh, make model serial number and I also had a use of force sheet that was signed and dated. I read that entire thing and there's two areas to sign on that. And I got my whole packet together, got the money order. I went to a bank and got the money order. So the nice thing with the money order, um, you could also have the tracking to see when that is deposited. And that's it. That's the packet. Took it to the police station and um, that dropped it off and it's the first one uh, that they received. So it's kind of a learning curve. Listen, it, it, this is new for a lot of the civilians uh, to be handing this stuff in to these PDs. So uh, we went through, everything looked great. Uh, wasn't missing anything, nothing really had to be tweaked. And then um, the PD showed it to the chief uh, and the chief then gave me a case number. So they were not sure about that. Uh, but I did get a case number, and then once I got that case number, I went on Identigo. Of course, it's all sold out at the time. I actually went to Easton, PA, visited some family, and then uh, got my fingerprinting from Identigo. I did not have to take the number from Identigo or anything and give it to the PD. Uh, they basically married up on their end. And then, um, so now at this point, the PD has the packet, and they have my Identigo. They sent out for the mental health check. Everything came back fine. Now they have a complete packet. So at that time, I kind of stopped in at the PD and I said, hey, how's everything? And they said, you know, we just took it over to the courts and we'll see what happens. I'd say it's about two and a half weeks later. Um, I heard that the uh, the courts were moving and, and Morris County was processing and um, uh, that um, the PD then received back my packet and it I got my card which I'm not going to show on camera but I got my carry card it's basically a piece of paper you know with my photo on it and it said see court order so I did receive a court order which is a piece of paper just the size like this and it has the uh, judge's signature on it and it states my gun and unfortunately <laughs> the way this court Morris County is doing it is that you get your permit and you also get a piece of paper. So you have to carry both. And so you can laminate it. And then at the same time, um, you can also, you, we're gonna have to fold obviously the eight and a half by 11 and see how that works out, but you have to carry both. Um, there's also a lot of confusion on if I can carry something different than not, that's on the piece of paper. I'm not gonna be a case study. Uh, I truly believe that it does state uh, that one permit 
will cover the guns owned by the holder. And at the same time, it says you have to show qualification scores and proficiency with every gun you want to carry. So um, I am only carrying what is uh, I have issued on my permit. Um, so we'll see what happens with that moving forward. One thing I know is I know this is eventually going to be on the computer. So I'm not going to have to carry this additional piece of paper for much longer. But um, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, so what did I qualify with? Well, I tell you what, I have uh, one gun I qualify with, uh, which was a 43X. Um, I shot very well with that. Um, it was basically one hole with six maybe that are outside about uh, about uh, an inch above which was the 25 yard and the uh i have another gun now that i i finally got and it's something i i wanted for a long time it's an awesome gun i'm really excited about it i'm now shooting with that gun uh this week and from what i understand i went to passaic county court which is not my court system i don't know i think it's going to work a little bit different with morris but Passaic County Court, I was there for four hours and watched them process their uh, permits. And somebody asked about how they add a gun to their carry permit. And the thing is, the judge said, call the clerk and you can then schedule to come in and show a score sheet that you're proficient and safe with that additional gun and then another photo you'll come in and we'll make an amendment to your carry permit. So I did not have to go to court uh, for my permit. It was mailed to the PD. So what I'm gonna do is get a score sheet showing passing and safe handling of the firearm with an additional photo, take it to my PD. I'm assuming what's gonna happen and stay tuned for the second video. And I'm also gonna talk about the gun, the second gun I qualified with, my favorite gun. Um, the there, my PD will probably take that and then send that to the court systems. I'm assuming the court system will then send that back with an amended piece of paper because on this paper is the gun I can carry. It's not on my permit. My permit basically says, see court order, and it said, see accompanying order. So I, that's why I have to carry two. So I'm assuming they're just gonna send that additional sheet. Um, a side note, how many guns would I be putting on this? I'm going to put on not only the guns that I would like to carry, but I'm going to put on guns that are my range guns, that I love going to the range with, that while I am coming in to shoot, uh, even again, if it's a gun I'm not going to carry, that I'm able to stop at a buddy's house afterwards, and that way it's covered. Uh, and that's it, so stay tuned. Uh, we'd love to have you guys out here. Come out, train, please, please train. Have a great time um, and email any questions you have regarding this whole process. Uh, we've had easily hundreds of people email in. They got their permit. Thank you for everything you've done and helped us. And we're here for you. Um, we treat everybody like family and support those who support you. We look forward to having you down.